Continuando, y ya en la última, en la tercera charla de la sesión del miércoles, presentamos a Diego Ferraz, quien nos va a hablar sobre una charla titulada Bresi Camin Type Results Involving Unbounded Weights. Obrigado. Eu vou, vou, vou ministrar a palestra em inglês, eu não, não, não falo muito bem é, espanhol, tá? É, então, é, first I would like to, é, to thanks for the opportunity to, to give this talk here. And é, we will discuss this work that is a joint work with uh, Pedro, Professor Pedro Villa of uh, Universidade Santiago de Chile and Ailton da Silva of the same university, university of mine. Uh, so we are going to discuss uh, existence and asymptotic behavior of entire positive solutions of this class of seminar elliptic problem, where L is a unif uh, local uniform elliptic operator And this weight here, or, or, or potential, and you can you can call potential also, uh, it's uh, not necessarily bounded. Okay, and F has a sublinear behavior, a general uh, sublinear behavior at zero and at infinity. Uh, this type of uh, discussion is motivated by the the celebrated work of Brisis coming when L, the elliptic operator, is the, actually, it is the Laplacian. And uh, the function rho is uh, locally bounded and non-negative. So this is the, the work that is studied in, by Brisis coming in 92. And actually, they proved the existence of solutions for this problem for n greater in three, by actually uh, studying a uh, uh, associated linear problem. So the, the argument is to prove existence for this same linear problem by studying a bounded solution, by studying bounded solutions for the linear problem. So that's the, the idea of Brisis Kami, not true. And so they prove that uh, the Same linear problem has a bounded solution if and only if the linear problem, which is this, has a bounded solution. So, uh, based on this, they uh, restrict the, the analysis on the linear problem. This problem here. Okay. So, uh, it, based on that, it's natural to consider a more general form of. of of this type and stood uh, the behavior of solutions at, uh, at infinity. The, in the, the same ideas, where F is has a sublinear behavior in the, in the, the general sense, uh, based on its limits on infinity and at zero. So this kind of problem, in fact, it has, uh, there is a lot of work Of, for this uh, seminar problem, uh, where we see these this works of Dinu in 2006, Gonçalves, Zhang, and Mohammed, and the reference given there, which I, I will give in the, in the talks end. So, uh, so but the, the approach there for this problem is different from the Brazil scan. In fact, they, they, the arguments of, is based on comparison techniques and results due to Brazil's also. So they use a different kind of approach. It's a more uh, direct approach to the problem based on this uh, paper by Brazil's also of, of 86. Uh, in one of these works, we mentioned Gonçalves and Santos, which studied a uh, 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 studied the, the problem and uh, they assumed that uh, the function is held continuous uh, but singular at zero in the sense that the limit when t goes to zero is plus infinity. So uh, this is the, the context of the problem and the, the, the point that's important to call is that uh, 
uh, in all other format work, aforementioned works, it's assumed that the weight rho is locally bounded. So the natural questions based on this context is, is it true to prove existence for the associated semilinear problem when the weight is not necessarily locally bounded or more specifically, if they belong to LP lock for some P. So the, our approach here is to give a positive answer for these questions under additional conditions, but general conditions of the nonlinearity, where we approach by means of Brazil's kind type result. That is, we study the linear problem in order to obtain existence of solution for the the associated semilinear problem. So we actually have to prove that the uh, bounded solutions for the semilinear associated problem give uh, solutions for the linear and conversion in the same in, in the same approach of Brazil's kind. So that's what I said. The, the results of Gonçalves and Santos, they all they, they are based in Brazil's also and they attack the problem directly. And in this paper of Francis Oswald, one can see that the condition that weight is locally bounded is strictly needed. So you cannot just apply the same argument here when the weight is not, ne not necessarily bounded. There, there you have to have some, some, some adjustments. You have to, in fact, it, it gives you an interesting problem. So just uh, now we, we, we point our hypothesis in more precise way, and we consider this the problem, this, this semilinear problem, where n is greater than three, where L is local elliptical operator in the divergence form. The divergence form of this local elliptical operator is just given by the principal part. Okay, there is no other part. This, the coefficients that we are assuming are symmetric and are locally, locally Lipschitz function. This is a, is locally el elliptical operator in the sense that it satisfies the elliptic condition, but in compact sets of R Rn. So the, the constants depends on the, the domain. So for this uh, semilinear problem, P, we consider the weight is non-negative in Rn, but cannot be zero. Uh, so it's, it's a, we can say that it's positive in the Lebesgue sense. Uh, belongs to LP for P greater, strictly greater than N. For one of our results, we assume that rho is had as a radial function and satisfies this, this integration condition. Uh, Epochs F1, we consider that the nonlinear is a character of function that uh, is sublinear in this general sense, that the, the limit of this quotient goes to infinity when t goes to zero. And uh, at infinity, okay, and, and, and at infinity, we ask either one of the following conditions. Uh, the first one is the this quotient goes to zero when t goes to infinity, but we ask additional that there is a technical uh, condition where we apply on, in one of our proofs. And two, that is the, the nonlinearity is below a function that satisfies the, the, this limit, one. Okay, but the, the function that satisfies one is actually uh, non decreasing. So in F2, it's give that it, it states that the function is sublinear at infinity, but is not necessarily non decreasing function. F3 is that the, the quotient is decreasing and the function f uh, when 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 you act 
and you, when you add this term, is known decreasing for almost every x. All this condition, it's uh, we ask for almost every x uniformly. Okay, so this is the the conditions. Now we can state our mind results. So first, for uh, actually, if you look for the seminar problem, there is a question that it cannot be actually be a, a in this general set. It cannot be a classical solution anymore. In fact, it it, it can be a strong solution. And so in, in this, it has to be to, to lie in a, in a W in a in a specific sublevel space. So we we denote E omega theta as the locally this local sublevel space of second order the weak derivatives but it needed to be bounded in the old domain so under the these previous conditions we actually proved that bounded solutions of the linear problem gives us uh, solutions for the seminar problem Post Actually, it's positive bounded solutions for the linear problem give us positive solutions for the same linear problem. Uh, in the end, more that the, uh, the obtained solution of the same linear problem is below the solution of the linear problem. And that this solution is minimal in the sense that if you give another uh, solution for the same linear problem, the solution obtained in one is actually below this given one. So uh, this theorem uh, states that now we have to look to obtain existence of solution for the seminar problem. We have to look for solutions for the linear problem. So you have to, we, we study okay, the, the existence uh, general or under general settings for the existence of solution for the linear problem, positive bounded solutions. So the first one is the in the sense of uh, calderon zygmunt result where it is based in convolution for a suitable fundamental solution for the linear operator. And the second one, which is given there, and there is a lot, uh, there is additional uh, technical conditions because we are actually, we look in the literature to apply, uh, to find uh, general uh, conditions just to have this uh, uh, solution for the linear problem, which actually has the, there is a, a reference for that and just it, it's the the hypothesis needed here the item b is when the operates actually the the laplace and so the existence of positive bound solution can be obtained by the, the calderon zygmunt results together with the fact that, that n is greater than p and the second item is when the problem is actually radial when uh, the operator is there is a weight a weight a radial weight and when when we has when we have this the settings uh, we we ask these technical conditions over uh, the integrals of this the the two weights the whole weight and the q here which will be the operator so the my idea is that when key q is one all these this conditions here tends to be more simplified like that. Okay. So these conditions here lies on the primitive of this function here. And uh, it actually is uh, a direct approach by integration of the problem. In fact, it's a lot of uh, technical conditions. But we, when Q is one, we, we summarize in this tree. Check is more accessible. Okay, uh, so we, we actually had proved that uh, the equivalence when the, 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 the weight is non negative and belongs to LP log for P greater than N, we actually have the, the same results of uh, Brzee's coming. This is what we proved. Actually, we, uh, we, can, could not, we could not prove the conversely because of the time we just want to prove, we will discuss the proof. Uh, where we find uh, solutions for the linear problem. So there is few examples of here for, for the nonlinearity, which are given there, okay, which all are sublinear. 
And our model case, which is with when the weight is radial, but this uh, is given is controlled by these different weights, where there is a relation where we, we find this relation by uh, replacing the the our our assumptions between alpha and beta. Okay, where uh, one of these powers controls the behavior of the weight at infinite and the other one near zero. Okay. So uh, the, the second part of the theorem, where it gives solution for the linear approach, for instance, includes this case, just replaced the, in the original equation. And now when you, when you replace the, when key Q is like it, it's in this form, we can uh, replace this form on the assumptions and discover what parameters me and eta have to be to have a solution for the linear problem. So when we replace there, we find uh, these relations between alpha beta and the dimension n. And so you can have, for instance, a no elliptic equation uh, uh, that not necessarily uniformly elliptically operated, but it can be zero at infinity, for instance. So it's, it's just locally elliptic operator, but in fact, not uh, in the whole Rn. So now let's discuss the proof. Our proof is based in the method of sub super solution, but for this, this problem, where who is, is the giving weight. And the operator, we, we actually prove a, more, a little more general result for method of subsolution where we can uh, add this, this part of the, in the operator. So in fact, we proved uh, met, uh, the, we, we, we could not find in the literature a reference for method and super, super solution for general elliptic operators with not necessarily bounded weight. So we, we have to prove, no? and so we, we prove it here. Uh, we give the precisely definition of sub super solution for the associated operator. Okay, with, with this inequality on the boundaries in the trace sense. Okay, and uh, based on this, on this, we actually prove a theorem that gives a method of sub sub solution. So you you find a sub and a super solution for this for this local uh, semi-elliptic problem, okay? Uh, that one is below the other one, but they are uh, between con uh, suitable constants. And when is the case, the theorem guarantees that there is a weak solution that lies between them, almost everywhere, where uh, the solution, uh, the regularity is given by that this belongs to the, the second of the weak derivatives, sublet space, and belongs to, and it's bounded because P is greater than N. Because the P is greater than N, we have this. Okay, so this is the, uh, to the main tool that we use. So in order to prove a uh, uh, relation between the linear problem and the seminar problem, we prove uh, existence and uniqueness of solution for this for this local problem. So you consider the local problem the, the semi basic hypothesis, and we prove that the, there, is ex, is, there is just one solution, uh, positive solution. Okay. So let's, let's do about the proof. So we, we have to apply the sub, sub solution method. So we have to find the, uh, a sub and a super solution. First, you, we use the sublinear condition at infinity to obtain a super solution. Okay, so we use there, we have this, we, we, we claim that the super solution, look at is actually, it's a parameter with the solution of the linear problem for suitable M. So we, we consider this cosine, use the hypothesis that is below the uh, assumption that this is not decreasing, and we use the, that satisfies the, the limit of the condition at infinity. And with that, with 
for this greater n, or uh, if you take n uh, large enough, we obtain the super solution. For the for the end alternative, we can use the first uh, first condition of F2, which is more technical but gives the same statement. The idea is is to avoid that the the actually function is uh, non decreasing. Okay. Uh, in any case, we find that uh, u bar u super bar is a super solution of the problem. For the, for the existence of the sub-solution, we understood the uh, associate a invalid problem with the weight. In fact, this problem was studied by, uh, and there is a lot of results in the, in the, uh, in the text written by Dijay in, in HC2, that uh, give imply the existence of uh, a function of this problem for suitable parameters. Actually, this solution is bounded by elliptic, uh, by a, a, a elliptic regularity up to the boundary because P is greater than N. And so we use the, the condition near zero to obtain that effect. For a sweet parameter, this, we have the, that uh, this solution here, uh, U sub bar, Epsilon the A value is a subsolution. Now we, we adjust the epsilon and m in order to one uh, stays below the order. So with this adjustment that use the fact that the solution of the superlinear problem is positive and bounded, we can apply the method sub super solution to obtain the existence of the, so the, the solution for the, this local problem. For the uniqueness, we use this, this approach. Okay, we consider this, this, this set of parameters between zero and one, such that uh, for given two solutions, the first one uh, multiplied by t is below the second one. So the idea is to prove that one belongs to the set and uh, use the same idea to interchange two by one. So you actually prove that one equals to u u u1 equals to u2 the first part is to prove that gamma has a neighborhood of zero where we will prove by a contradiction argument if not there exists a sequence of points that this inequality do not holds and also where tn is uh, one over n so you define ci the difference for given ends we have by the definition that is negative. And so by continuity, we can assume that Xn, this, this, each Xn is a minimal point. We apply the gradient for this function for, because it's a minimal point. It will be equals to zero, so we have this equality. When we take in, uh, when we take the limit by compacity, the sequence, the sequence Xn converges in, for in the the domain up to the boundary. Okay, uh, you use this condition when we pass the limit and the continuity of the solutions. Okay, because n is greater than p, we actually have the continuity of the gradient, and uh, we actually obtain that derivative is zero and the point the the u u applying in the, the limit point is is non positive, but it's a contradiction with the fact that u two is positive. So the only option for the point is to belong to the boundary. But now we actually apply the Hopf maximum principle for this kind of, for this class of problem. We can find it in the same reference. Uh, and we actually apply the Hopf maximum principle to, to give that derivative, the normal derivative is negative, which is a contradiction with this uh, derivative above. So uh, we prove, okay, that the, the gamma has a, a neighborhood of zero. Okay. And with that, with weight of that, we prove that uh, the, su the supremum of this, this set, now it's non-negative, okay. Uh, we actually prove in particular that it's non-negative. Uh, that uh, T0 is, uh, uh, the sub is 
uh, belongs uh, and, and equals to one. Okay. So you use the F quad, this behavior, that function is increasing, which is possible, again, because P is greater than N, so the function is bounded in the domain. You can use this condition together with the, the sublinear condition, okay? And so we actually have that U, U2 minus T0, once this is the sub, and U, U1, uh, satisfies this, uh, th those conditions. So uh, you actually have that the difference satisfies this uh, elliptic problem with this not necessarily bounded weight. Okay. And here you actually can apply some regularity results. It's no negative, the weight. So let's, uh, the idea is to prove that uh, T0 is so one, okay. So if the, 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 the function table is, is zero, we have a condition wife with uh, the fact that the quotient, uh, one of the condition is decre decreasing. Just replacing the, use the definition and apply the operator L, you have this, this, this contradiction. So the function is not zero. We actually, we prove that there is epsilon such that this condition holds using the definition of table, you have that T0 plus W belongs to gamma, which is a contradiction with the definition of the supremum. So you have to prove that the, this inequality holds, that is X. So you claim that there is, it's not holds. Uh, it's not holds, so do we have this uh, analogous function with the, where, with the above case. We define it in this matter. So use the same argument that for each X epsilon based on for based in this epsilon is a minimum point, apply the gradient. Okay, take epsilon as go to zero in the similar way. Uh, conclude that the point is non is non positive. And so we uh, and so okay. And so we use the same argument here. The point is that uh, we find the point, use the same argument that the point uh, belongs to the interior of the domain. And so we apply the strong maximum principle based on these this three reference to conclude that uh, the, the function is zero, which is a contradiction because the, the function is not zero. So it's the, what we already just talked. And so we, we actually up to find so, uh, solutions for the linear problem, we, we apply uh, to prove the main results. We, we apply, we consider the local problem for balls. Okay, there is this one. Uh, we use the same argument above and to to obtain the sequence based on non balls, uh, non decreasing, okay, and uh, we act based on the super super solution, okay, and uh, and now you, you prove that the limit of these non decreasing functions are in fact uh, the solution of the original problem. So we take the limit of this of the solution for each ball, which is non decreasing which not is it's not decreasing and we apply the we actually prove that this limit is an it's a very weak solution of the original problem the similar elliptic problem with this uh, we apply this regularity result this re very very recent regular res result of very weak solutions to obtain that the limit of these solutions are in fact a solution of the seminar problem the main difference here is because in Brazil's coming, they use uh, argument based on the green functions. And when the weight is not necessarily bounded, we actually don't know if we can apply the same argument. So the, this, this argument replaces the ones that involve in green functions. So this is how we prove the existence of center of, for the seminar problem. And so we look for solution of the, the linear problem, which actually is it's quite easy. The first one, we look in this reference here to obtain 
suitable conditions for the existence of the solution for this general linear problem. Okay, which is actually give once this reference here, Hoffman King, 2007. Okay, the uh, in the second case is when this the Laplacian, so you, you actually have the local uh, boundary solution bounded by the, the Calderon Zygmunt result. When it, the operator is radial, we just look, uh, the operator uh, actually is, is divergent, but the, the equation turns to be here, it's radial. So we formally integrate this equation, uh, the, the, the linear, linear problem. Uh, it's actually this equation, we, we will integrate, we found this expression, and use the assumptions just to uh, what is the general conditions in, in such a way that is well defined in the sense where what that it's a, a solution for the linear problem. It is a solution uh, provided that this term is finite. Finite. So you, you to prove that it's finite, you consider just for R and use integration by parts and the, the considered assumptions. That's why the conditions are in fact uh, more technical. So the, there is an open problem. Uh, if the, what is the, the, uh, the smallest number for which the same linear problem is, uh, there is a solution. So it's uh, actually it's the, the reference that we talked about. There's the the reference of Professor Dijai here, and that's what uh, I wanted to to talk. Thank you. Well, we thanks to Diego for the nice talk. Any comment or question? Please turn on your microphone. Well, there is no question. It seems there is no question. So we thanks again to Diego for the nice talk. Thank you very much.